Let's now look at the pitching moment um, around a Joukowsky airfoil. And uh, for this, we need to go back to the Blasius relations. So the Blasius relations say that if we have some complex velocity in the z-plane, uh, we can compute the pitching moment at the origin of that uh, plane uh, from this equation here. So it's one half rho times the real part of a of a an integral uh, that goes around a, a closed surface around the object of interest. Um, we've got our velocity, our complex velocity in this equation squared times z, which is a complex number dz. Okay, so now this is a fairly complicated equation. Our complex velocity in the z-plane uh, can be written like this, where we have uh, where it's a function of zeta here, uh, where we we've got this uh, this transformation from z to zeta. So so this is our complex velocity, and so uh, in order to compute the pitching moment about the origin, we're going to take this and square it, and uh, and plug it in here. Now I'm actually not going to work through all the math. Uh, to come up with this equation, I'm just going to talk through the steps to do it. So, uh, so the first thing here would be we take this squared, uh, this equation squared, and plug it in right up here. Um, we've also got this z term here. This is our transformation. So we want to put this in terms of zeta. The w z is now in terms of zeta, um, and uh, and so now we we we'd put in this uh, for z here. We'd swap out the values for zeta. And then dz here, we actually take the derivative of this um, with respect to zeta, and uh, we could swap out uh, the, the dz there for, for a term that's uh, with respect to d zeta instead. Okay, so once we do that, uh, let me just uh, uh, write this down. So actually, let's just call this equation 1, uh, 2, and 3. So uh, the steps here is we would uh, plug... Uh, 2 and 3 uh, into 1. Okay, then uh, then we would integrate. Uh, we need to integrate equation number 1 um, around some closed surface. And, and to make this simple, what we'll do is we'll just choose a large circle that's much larger than the size of the airfoil. And, uh, and integrating along the surface of that circle is very simple. Uh, and so that's uh, that's how we would do this integral then. So uh, so we integrate um, around a large circle that encompasses our airfoil, um, and then uh, we're also going to be able to swap out a couple things here. So for example, um, we're going to have this gamma term. Uh, we see this gamma that shows up in here, and so that'll still be in there when we do that integral. And we're going to swap out uh, gamma for uh, for lift because we know from uh, the Kutta-Joukowsky law that the lift is equal to rho v infinity gamma. So uh, so our solution will be t in terms of lift instead of gamma. And then uh, one last thing we'll do is that the epsilon that shows up in these equations. So uh, we see we've got this epsilon here. Uh, that, that then will be in this equation, uh, and, and also this one here. Uh, that epsilon has to be a certain value in order for, um, for this to be a Joukowsky airfoil. So remember that epsilon for Joukowsky airfoil is r minus uh, c naught minus the square root of r squared minus eta naught squared. Okay, so, uh, so we'd swap out that for epsilon. And uh, what we end up with is some uh, some equation for the pitching moment. It's kind of a large equation, so I'm just going to save the time and not write it down. And instead, uh, we're going to take one more step and look at a non-dimensional pitching moment, so a pitching moment coefficient. And the definition of that uh, is simply the, the pitching moment uh, that we get uh, above divided by 1 half rho v infinity squared and then times the chord, and the chord that we're using is z trailing edge minus z leading edge, and uh, and we have to square that to non-dimensionalize the pitching moment. Okay, so when we plug that all in, uh, what we'll get here, uh, and actually let's let's plug in one more thing uh, before we write this all down. Um, so z t minus z l, 
uh, we found that that can be written as 4 r squared minus a to naught squared over a square root of r squared minus a to naught squared. Uh, let's see, minus c naught, okay? Uh, so that's the, um, uh, that's uh, uh, zt minus zl, okay? Anyway, um, let's, let's write this down here. So cm naught, then uh, we can write as, uh, that's equal to pi fourths r squared minus eta naught squared minus c naught squared over r squared minus eta naught squared all that times sine uh, sine of 2 alpha sine of 2 alpha uh, minus 1 fourth times the lift coefficient that's that lift term showing up and, and once we non-dimensionalize we get the lift coefficient there times c naught cosine of alpha plus eta naught sine alpha over r squared minus eta naught squared and that is multiplied by the square root of r squared minus eta naught squared minus c naught okay so this is um this is our uh pitching moment at the origin. Okay, and I'm just gonna put a box around that. That's our pitching moment at the origin. Uh, so that's nice, um, but sometimes we'd like to know what the pitching moment is away from the origin. So we wanna look at how do we move that pitching moment around in the Z plane. Remember the Z plane is the plane where we have our uh, the airfoils. So I'll just draw that over here. This is the Z plane. And so maybe I want to know what the pitching moment is, uh, not necessarily around the origin there, but uh, but around some other location. And we're just going to call this um, uh, some location Z that has components X, uh, Y, or, or I guess I, Y. Okay, so the pitching moment at some location Z is equal to the pitching moment at the origin uh, plus CL times uh, uh, X, which is that X location that we're interested in, X times cosine alpha plus Y sine alpha uh, over, and here we have this ZT minus ZL again, which we know what that is, and so Actually, we can just rewrite this as uh, CM naught, so the pitching moment at the origin, plus one fourth CL tilde uh, times X cosine alpha plus Y sine alpha divided by R squared minus A to naught squared uh, times the square root of R squared minus A to naught squared. Uh, minus c naught. Okay, so this is the pitching moment at any location z now, uh, where z is a complex number, uh, has components x and y, which which factor in right here. So we've got this x and the y, and uh, and this pitching moment at the origin again comes from this equation here. So of course you could plug all of this into this equation, uh, but I don't see any any need to do that. So we would just compute our pitching moment with the origin and then move it to any other location um, using this expression here, okay? So again, using the velocities relations, we plugged in this complex velocity along with our transformation. Uh, we went through these steps um, and, and uh, the mathematics is actually fairly involved uh, to get to this point. But, uh, but after swapping out our lift, uh, or gamma for lift, and, and recognizing that epsilon is constrained, we came up with an equation for the pitching moment at the origin, and then we can, we can uh, develop the non-dimensional version of that, which is this equation here, and then look at that at any point in Z, which is this equation here.